Hi guys, so now that we've covered measurement, um, we're going to take a look at matter and energy, our next unit. Um, and this is kind of like, kind of on the macroscopic scale, and then we'll kind of dive deeper into what's going on um, in the molecular level as we move on through other units. So first of all, let's talk about um, matter because we know that chemistry is the study of matter and how it changes. So we know that something is matter if it has mass and volume. So if we're able to weigh something and figure out how much space it takes up, then we can say that that is matter. Now, calling something matter is very general. We also need to be able to look at matter and classify it a little bit more specifically. So matter can be broken down into two more specific groups. Matter can either be a pure substance or it can be a mixture. So um, these little boxes, these are called particle diagrams. And these are if we were to be able to zoom in and see what kinds of atoms and molecules make up the matter. And they help us classify the type of matter that we have. So take a look at the pure substance versus the mixture. And I want you guys to think about how they're different. Okay, so if something is considered a pure substance, that means it has a uniform composition. So it's made up of all of the same stuff. Every single molecule in this particle diagram is the same as the one next to it, it's pure. Um, we use the word substance a lot in science, um, and up until this point, we've probably been using it incorrectly because substance actually means something very specific. It means the composition has to be uniform. Um, as opposed to a mixture, when you see um, atoms or molecules that are different colors or different shapes, that's signifying that we have a different substance. Okay, so to be a mixture, we have to have two or more, there could be more than two things, um, substances. And I want you to take note of how they are together. They are physically combined. And that'll make more sense in a little while, but basically physically combined means that the different substances aren't touching each other. They're not bonded together. They're just mixed together in the same container. container. Um, what else is important about a mixture is that the ratio of the components can vary. So let's write this down and then we'll talk about what it means. Components can vary. So what that means is, um, let's, say, let's say that this was salt water, a mixture of salt and water. That means that um, I can play around with the amount of salt and the amount of water I mix together. If I have two cups of water and I put one scoop of salt in one cup and five scoops of salt in the other cup, that doesn't change the identity of the mixture. Both mixtures are still salt water. So um, we're allowed to have different amounts of things in a mixture. Okay, um, what else can we say about a mixture? Another thing that it's important is that each substance retains its properties. And again, we'll write that down, and then we'll talk about what it means. So that means that when I mix two things together, they don't react. They don't turn into something new and have new properties. If I mix together salt and water, the salt is still salt, the water is still water. I can separate that mixture. I can evaporate the water out and have just water and I would have salt left in my container. So um, each thing that you mix together keeps its original properties, okay? Where if you were to do a reaction and you were to bond two things together, which we'll talk about in a minute, our properties would change. So that's important for mixture. Okay, so now that we have two categories, we're gonna get even more specific. If something is considered a substance, you can go one step further and you can say, okay, is that substance an element or is it a compound? So I want you guys to look at these particle diagrams. Up here, I have two particle diagrams that show me examples of an element. 
And I want you to compare those to the particle diagrams or diagram of the compound. What do you think it means to be an element? So if it's an element, we only have one type of atom. That means in your entire box, every circle is going to be the same color and same shape and same size as the one next to it. So um, if you're not given a particle diagram, how you can tell something is an element is you can look on the periodic table or table S. So when you guys get to class on Monday or Tuesday, I'm going to, um, I'm going to give you a copy of the region's reference tables um, and everything on those charts are elements. So you would know that they're elements just by their name. Um, something else important about an element is that they can't be broken down. So because elements are the simplest type of matter, you can't separate them into smaller parts. There's only one thing there. Okay, um, so an example, um, I'll give you two examples of elements. Um, the top particle diagram could be helium. Helium is an element on the periodic table. Um, I want you to look at that second box and tell me how it's different. See how we have two circles bonded together? So I don't want you guys to get confused. Just because I have two circles bonded together doesn't mean that I have a compound because to be a compound, the two circles have to be different from one another. This is called a diatomic element. So di meaning two, atomic meaning atoms. Sorry guys, the loudest car just drove by. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> um, so, but we know it's an element because again, every circle in the box is the same as the one next to it. So um, an example of a diatomic element, um, actually there's, there's a list of them that you actually have to know. So I'm gonna write out the list. This is like a little mnemonic device to help you remember. So this word is pronounced Brinkelhoff. And it's a list of elements that are diatomic, meaning they will, they will never come as just a single atom. So we have bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. So what would that look like? Um, instead of just writing Br, it would be Br2. But again, even though I have two atoms, they're both the same, so it's still an element. Okay. Okay, so now let's look at my compound. Um, so definition of a compound, I have two or more different elements, and that's important. And they're chemically combined. So in a mixture, we talked about how they were physically combined. They were just together in the same space. Here, they are chemically combined. You see in the molecule, you have two little black circles and one big white circle, and they're stuck together. That means that they're bonded, okay? So now how else are compounds different from mixtures? They have to combine in a fixed ratio. So what does that mean? Um, if you think about making a water molecule, right? The formula for water is H2O. So let's write down an example of a compound is H2O. So to make water, I have to put together two H's and one O. If I added an extra something, let's say I added an extra oxygen and I had H2O2. Do you guys know what that is? That's actually hydrogen peroxide. Can you drink hydrogen peroxide? Absolutely not. Um, hydrogen peroxide is extremely reactive. Water is extremely unreactive. It's very safe. It's actually necessary for our survival. Adding one more oxygen to it makes it something totally different. So the ratio here is important. It determines the identity of the compound, where in a mixture, you're allowed to play with those ratios. Um, because compounds are made up of more than one thing, they can break down, but they'd have to be broken down chemically, meaning we would have to do a chemical reaction to break up bonds. It's not as easily as, um, it's not as easy as taking apart a mixture. Okay. All right. So now let's look at our mixtures. Again, once you decide something's a mixture, you can go, um, 
you can be even more specific and say what type of mixture it is. So I have homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. So if you look at the particle diagrams, you want to look at how the particles are spread out. So in a homogeneous mixture, we say that the particles are spread evenly, which means that every single different type of substance is in every different part of the box. They're not sorted. They're not grouped together with other molecules that look like them. They're all mixed evenly. Where heterogeneous, so I obviously have two different substances in this box also, but all of the diatomic elements are together on top and all of the compounds are grouped together on the bottom. We have layers, they're sorted. So this is called spread unevenly. So looking at a particle diagram, that's how you would tell if a mixture is homogeneous or heterogeneous. Um, from the outside, you can also tell if you didn't have a microscopic view. Um, I want to give you an example of both, and then this will make more sense. Um, an example of a homogeneous mixture is iced tea. An example of a heterogeneous mixture is um, oil and water. So I want you guys to imagine looking at iced tea from the outside. You know that there are two things in that mixture. You know that there is water and you know that there is iced tea powder mixed together. But because they mix together nicely and evenly from the outside, iced tea is only one color. You can't tell it's a mixture just by looking at the color because it's only one color. So um, what we want to describe that as is it looks uniform from the outside. Okay, where a heterogeneous mixture, if you picture oil and water in the same beaker, you know that the water would be on the bottom and the oil would be sitting on top of it. It's very easily to see on the outside that there are two different things in that beaker. They're not mixed together evenly. The water is in one area, the oil is in a different area. So that's the difference there. Um, the other example that I want to give you for homogeneous, um, before we talked about, um, we talked about salt water being a mixture. So an abbreviation that you're going to start seeing for, um, for homogeneous. Um, so the salt that we put on our food, it's actually NaCl. So I have two elements bonded together. I know that salt is a compound. To show that salt is dissolved in water or that anything is dissolved in water, we actually use this symbol AQ, which stands for aqueous. Um, and aqueous means something is dissolved in water. So anytime you see a substance with an AQ next to it, you know it's a mixture. And more specifically, you know it's a homogeneous mixture because if something is dissolved in water, you can't see it anymore. The mixture looks like one color from the outside. Okay, so um, I hope this kind of makes sense, guys. I'm going to have you do some practice, and we'll talk more about this um, in our next in our next video.